We warned you at Syracuse, and you persisted. You took advantage of us at New Canaan to drive us out. And like the dogs of Caesar you are, you followed us to Zion. And now you stand on holy ground, a temple to God's glory on Earth. The only use for an animal in our temple is sacrifice. Kale Wachene conserva all. You understand me, don't you? Don't you? Outman. Kunaman mad. He kill all white legs. You talk. You stop. Him hear you. You talk. Don't listen to this thing. His cries are those of a mad beast caught in a thicket. He gave no mercy to my family, and I will give none to his. He has a debt to pay for what he's done, and I've come to collect. And so he's chosen to cower in the water like a dumb animal. I want to take from them what they took from me, from my family, in this life. I want them to suffer. I want all of them to die in fear and pain. I want to have my revenge against him, against Caesar. I want to call it my own, to make my anger God's anger, to justify the things I've done. Sometimes I tell myself that these wildfires never stop burning, but I'm the one who starts them, not God, not them. I can always see it in my mind, the warmth and the heat. It will always be a part of me. But not today. Go. Get out of here. Go back. Back to the Great Salt Lake. That's it. It's finished. Thank you for staying. Done this on my own. Let's go find Daniel. Tomorrow we'll be here soon. And there is much to do. And so it was that the conflict between the new Canaanites and the White Legs was finally resolved. The courier's involvement had tipped the scale, shifting the fragile balance of power. Demoralized by the dead horse and sorrow's attack the courier and Joshua Graham led against them, the White Legs retreated to Great Salt Lake. Their days were numbered. Word soon reached the 80s tribe that the White Legs' spirit was broken, their war chief a dim shadow of his former self. By year's end, the 80s would overrun the White Legs camps, scattering the tribe to the winds and claiming the Great Salt Lake for its own. The Sorrows fought beside Joshua Graham and the dead horses, eradicating the threat the White Legs posed to Zion. Seeing the courier convince Joshua Graham to spare salt upon wounds, the Sorrows learned that retribution could be tempered by mercy. Though he despaired at the sorrow's loss of innocence, Daniel took some small consolation in the courier's lesson and prayed it would take root. Having helped eradicate the white legs from Zion, the dead horses returned to Dead Horse Point in triumph. They remained neutral toward the sorrows, but as years went on, there were periods of competitive friction, even violence between the tribes. The new Canaanites, Daniel especially, intervened regularly as mediators, but found it difficult to reconcile the tribe's conflicts. The defeat of the White Legs and Zion marked a turning point in the fortunes of the Happy Trails Caravan Company. Every two months, the caravan met with the new Canaanites in Zion Valley to trade. Happy Trails soon returned to prosperity. The vigilance of the sorrows and dead horses in defending southwestern Utah 
initially startling to Happy Trail's caravans, soon proved a blessing. The tribes united against the 80s, driving them back from Highway 50, and thus opening yet another trading route for Happy Trail's caravans. Follows Chalk took the courier's words to heart and decided that he would behold the sights and sounds of distant lands with his own eyes and ears. After returning to Dead Horse Point, he quarreled with his family and other tribe members about his ambitions. One morning, they awoke to discover that Follows Chalk had set off alone, westward, into the wilderness. He was never seen again. Waking Cloud was distraught when she learned of her husband's death, but took comfort from her tribe and the compassion of the new Canaanites. She forgave Daniel for having concealed her husband's fate from her and learned to accept his fate. When her grief faded, she took a husband from the Dead Horse tribe. At her bidding, he stayed close to home. The threat of the White Legs ended. Joshua Graham helped the Sorrows and Dead Horses tend to their fallen comrades and secure Zion. The Courier's words had stayed Joshua's wrath in his darkest hour, and in sparing salt upon wounds, he was changed. While he continued to advocate militant opposition to the enemies of New Canaan, he sometimes showed quarter to those who crossed his family. Eventually, this new spirit would diminish the myth of the burned man in distant lands. A small price for the peace it brought to Joshua Graham. For years after the defeat of the White Legs, Daniel did his best to minister to the Sorrow's spiritual needs. Try as he might, he could not hold back the tribe's increasing militancy and reverence of Joshua Graham. Demoralized, he returned to his family and Dead Horse Point. His failures haunted him for the rest of his days. And with that, the courier walked out of the history of the tribes of Zion and back to the gathering storm of the Mojave Wasteland.